Hey, you're listening to the Tales of a Gearhead podcast. This is brought to you by Cornwell Tools. I'm your host, Stacy David. And Cornwell Tools are the choice of professionals, but not just professionals. Also, for everybody that wants to do any kind of quality work with quality tools, better check out Cornwell. All right, let's get to it. All right, one thing that came across the news feed today, it's like Tesla is having a a recall here. Uh, they've got a software glitch that can cause the e-brake to activate its speed. <laughs> yeah, that can be a little bit of a problem at 70 miles an hour. The e-brake comes on. <laughs> Listen, you know, I'll tell you what, the, the biggest issue that, that I see here that we really need to be careful with as an industry is, whether it's a Tesla or whatever, is giving so much control of the car to an electronic computer. You know, it's one thing if it's running the engine, but when it becomes starts to deal with your braking or your self-driving vehicles and things like that, perhaps we need to tap the brakes on this a little bit, no pun intended, and not give the control to the vehicle to some computer, at least until things have been tested out a little more because, you know, once the computer has control of it, you're just along for the ride. Hopefully they'll get that dealt with and... And figure it out. All right, so as we're nearing the end of 2021, wrapping this thing up, it's been quite a year for us. I'm sure it's been quite a year for you guys as well. Uh, we're just completing the new shop, which has been nice. And looking forward to getting in there and getting some good work done. Uh, obviously, it's the second year of COVID. COVID's still around. Everybody has seemed to have uh, adapted to it. and We're moving forward as a nation. I think that's great. It's, it's funny, you know, it's, obviously it's created a lot of supply chain issues. You know, that's, that's kind of the big thing now. And uh, it looks like we're slowly working through that. 2021 also had some high points to me. You know, one of the big things that I saw is that even though, you know, people are still kind of tentative to get out and around, automotive events have returned, you know, in great numbers and with great enthusiasm. And that has been nice to see. SEMA was way down, but PRI was huge. And people are wanting to get out and enjoy their cars again. And that is so nice to see that. You know, uh, people are wanting to get out. The cars and coffees things are packed. You know, the shows that are actually happening are packed. You know, people are wanting to get out to the races again. You know, they're wanting to get out and enjoy their cars. And another benefit is that people have been home working on their vehicles. So there's a lot of great cars coming out. A lot of new car people that have been, you know, in there working on stuff. So I'm really encouraged in what I'm I'm seeing, you know, in the industry. Now, that being said, you know, the supply chain issues are a bit of a problem because people want the the products and the companies are just going great guns but now they're starting to run into issues to get the product out so as you guys probably know you know I've got a friend that has uh, ordered some Krager wheels to put on his classic uh, Camaro and they're on back order indefinitely Krager you know they're just you know they just don't know they're sitting out on a ship somewhere in the <laughs> <laughs> out around California, I guess. So anyway, the the enthusiasm is definitely there. There's still some challenges, but there always are. You know, we're car people. We'll get past that. All right, I've got a question for you guys. What is the most important tool in your garage? All right, I know you're thinking. I know you're thinking. Come on. Give me, yeah, all right. All right, well, it's probably the one you use the most. And that would be your sockets, your ratchets, your screwdrivers, and your wrenches. And if you want quality tools there, you probably ought to check out somebody like Cornwell. Now, granted, you can get some cheaper tools. And honestly, there's a place for those. Those ones that you want to bend up and heat and go into certain places. And those screwdrivers, you don't mind screwing up. (laughs) Well, that's where you get the cheap stuff. But if you want real quality tools that are going to last and have a warranty... That's where you need to check out somebody like Cornwell. They've been doing it forever, and believe me, you do get what you pay for.
Since it is Christmas season here, we wanted to see what kind of Christmas memories you guys have as far as automotive. For me, it almost always involves a Jeep. You know, my dad always had a Jeep when I was growing up. When I was really young, he had an old Willys flat fender, CJ2A, man, all original, never had a top on it. He was always out there in that Jeep. And I remember some of my best childhood memories was we would go cut our own Christmas tree. And of course, we'd take the Jeep. So we're all out there in our coats and hats, freezing our butts off as dad looked for the perfect tree. And then we'd get out and freeze as dad cut down the tree. And we'd load it in the Jeep, which meant the tree was on top of us, you know, and we're riding and all covered with the pine needles and stuff as the Jeep motored down the road. And it was just a great memory, you know, of the Jeep out there. And of course, dad, he'd pull us in sleds on the Jeeps. (laughs) You guys are going to laugh about this. He would take a rope and tie it to the back bumper of the Jeep. And then he would wrap the rope around a spare tire. Now, this is just the tire. Obviously, there's no rim. And then we would lay another tire on top. That way, you held on. If the upper tire slid off, you would slide off and you could be released. So you didn't somehow get caught to the one that was actually tied to the back of the Jeep. Now, the reason that that was important is that dad would get out into a big parking lot at the fairgrounds, you know, when there was four or five inches of snow on the ground, and he'd start whipping that Jeep around and doing donuts with it. Well, you got 20 feet of rope sticking out the back. You get quite a crack of the whip going on there. And, of course, he would send us into big tumbling piles of snow. And we were laughing. You know, I think about it now. It's like there couldn't have been anything safe about that, you know, because you'd hit all. You you didn't know what was in that parking lot. But fortunately, none of us got hurt. Just really fond memories, which is probably why I love Jeeps and Land Cruisers and Scouts and any kind of a Jeep sort of vehicle to this day. I mean, I just... It was just a great Christmas memory. To me, it's always around a Jeep doing some sort of an off-road thing. I also remember one Christmas, my brother, you know, because we were getting the regular toys and Hot Wheels and stuff in our childhood. But when we started getting up into junior high and high school age, we were starting to get into cars and motorcycles. And I remember one year, dad's, you know, he did this thing. It's like there's a knock on the door. And he goes to the door and there sits a Honda CB350 motorcycle for my older brother and it's like oh he got a motorcycle and this thing was used i think dad got it for 50 bucks of course this was you know this is in the 70s and the bike was probably a 73 you know and this was late 70s so the bike had already been worn pretty good but it was old cb350 man and uh my brother had that bike forever and it was so cool you know we gutted the pipes did all kinds of stuff to it But I remember that was the first automotive thing where somebody got something automotive. And it was almost like a rite of passage. It's like, we're grownups now. We're getting motorcycles. You know, even though it wasn't mine, I was excited for my brother. Of course, dad brought it in the house and fired it up in the house. And, you know, of course, mom didn't really appreciate that. (laughs) Uh, So I'm sure you guys can relate, man. (laughs) It It was a cool time. How about you, Jonathan? Do you have any uh, Christmas memories, automotive related, of a you know of a car, motorcycle, toys, anything like that? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Back when this would have been probably eighty five or eighty six. Yeah. And uh, my twin brother and I were both. I think we were we were about twelve, maybe thirteen. We told our dad we were. I mean, we were just really really into G.I. Joe. Oh, we yeah. We watched the cartoons. We had the figures. Well, we got down to the Christmas tree early that morning. And at our house, you always had to, you could like look inside the room. Yeah. You, you couldn't touch anything. Couldn't oh, touch yeah. your stocking. Yeah. Couldn't touch your, your presents. Nothing. Oh, that's so hard. That's so hard. Right? <laughs> and, and they're like, oh, yeah, no, you, you got to, you, you have to eat breakfast first. Oh no, the breakfast deal. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, I mean, and having a six year old now, I understand 
why parents want children to eat their breakfast first. Because, <laughs> what, just load up with Christmas candy? <laughs> right, right. Just load up, go south real quick. About 30 minutes in, just everybody explodes. Yeah. But uh, I remember we ate breakfast, and we were just dying to get in there. And I have a twin brother. And so what my dad would do is whatever he got one of us, he got the other. So okay. the other yeah. couldn't, we, we couldn't gripe at each other for, you yeah. got this, that was cooler. Oh, yeah. Oh, well, yeah. G.I. Joe Christmas, it was. And there were all these boxes under the tree. And it was Jeeps. It was like a tank, oh, a support man. vehicle. Oh, man. I remember the tank. Yeah. The, uh, do you remember the Dragonfly helicopter? Oh, yes. Had the Dragonfly. Is that the one where you could push the button and the rotors would spin? Yeah, absolutely. Oh, gosh, it was. That was so awesome. And those, those suckers were like, I mean, you kind of put a couple of pieces together to get them going. Yeah. And they were big. Yeah. And then he pulls out of the of the the closet in the room, pulls out two more boxes, and we were like, "What in the world is this?" And they had like a, I can't remember, it was like an F sixteen or something like that, but oh, it was man. a jet. <laughs> and so, because there were two of us, there were two jets, oh, and two no. helicopters, and two tanks, and man, that was the craziest. I mean, talk about. You know, when when you want to have battles, oh yeah, we just we had. I mean, we just had full on battles, and of course, inevitably, one of those big helicopters, one of those big jets, you're you're whipping it around, you know, running through the house with it, and you <laughs> you clip clip a lampshade or something like oh, that. Oh sure, yeah. Down goes the lamp. But I remember that was that was probably the first year that we really got um, stuff that was tied into. Uh, automotive stuff. I mean, there, there there were always like Hot Wheels here and there oh, yeah. and stuff like that. But for some reason that year, my dad was like, well, I guess if they want G.I. Joe, they'll just get <laughs> all the G.I. Joe. Oh, that's awesome. Do you still have any of that G.I. Joe stuff? Oh, uh, you know, I wish I did. We, we gave a lot of it. Uh, we had uh, nieces and nephews that were about six years younger than us. Sure, sure. So there was a lot of trickle down toy giving. <laughs> And so you know they would they would get you know the the, the jet might still have the wings on it but the yeah. the canopy the ejection canopy is <laughs> long since gone in our backyard <laughs> just decades before years before I think the the only thing we have we've we've got a I've got an old Footlocker yeah it's a military Footlocker from when my grandfather was in the Navy oh yeah so it's one of those wooden ones in that wooden Footlocker yeah there is uh, we have a bunch of old. Tonkas that were my dad's oh and my, my uncle's gosh. when they were growing up. Yeah. So we've got probably about ten or twelve Tonkas from you know the 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 early fifties. Oh yeah. Oh, those are the rare ones. Yeah. And, yeah. and and the stuff still works. I mean, they had they had real hydraulics on them. The dump trucks. Oh yeah. You know, you hit that thing, and it still it still will do a whole slow maneuver. Oh There's, yeah. I mean, uh, we tore all of ours up. Unfortunately, <laughs> <laughs> they didn't like. We were rough on them. Man. Yeah, well, they were perfect for like, you oh, know, yeah. putting M eighties in. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you talk about tearing up. You know, the the room at Christmas time. I had a similar thing. You just reminded me of that. You know, I was really into electric trains at a, at a certain age, and I had this little HO set, and it was sitting on a piece of plywood you know, going around just on the floor. And the yeah. Christmas tree is off to the side. And, okay, so I set the train at a certain speed, and I wanted to get that thought of the train coming at you. So I'm, like, laying my head on the track as the train comes toward me. <laughs> and then I'm just raising my head up just enough so the train goes under me. You know, and so I, I keep running around in front of the train because I want to keep getting that. So I'm doing the circle with the train. I'm just trying to stay a little ahead of it. Yeah. Well, the Christmas tree is right off to the side, and I get the extension cord wrapped around my foot <laughs> that the tree is plugged into. And so as I go around, I pull the whole Christmas tree over on top of me and the, and the railroad set. <laughs> right. And there's this big crash, and of course, and from the other room, <laughs> I hear my mom, what was that? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And it, just, it was all this tinkling of broken balls and tinsel everywhere. Oh, my gosh. Do you, do you remember how dangerous that was? Like, you'd be putting up Christmas ornaments, and, and if you were a little kid, if you grabbed one of those things a little bit too hard, man, that thing would just shatter. Oh, yeah, and it was that real thin glass. It's not automotive, but it's it's pretty funny. My parents got divorced when I was four. Yeah. That's not the funny part. 
Yeah. But they got divorced when I was four. My mom moved uh, my brothers and I to California. Yeah. And for Christmas, we got a golden retriever. Oh, man. And his name was Prince. Yeah. And we had this picture window on the back of our house. We had this, <laughs> we had this little tiny house, yeah. but it had this cool picture window. And in the backyard, behind the backyard, there was a, um, I think it was a citrus grove. Um, or maybe an apple grove. I'm not, I'm not, I know there was fruit back there. Yeah. And this dog was so keyed up. He was not a puppy. It yeah. Was, it, this was, this was like a one year old golden retriever we got. And that dog <laughs> got so excited, it jumped through the back window and yeah. glass. And this is Christmas. Yeah. Glass and everything shattered. Dog didn't have a cut on it. We're yeah. all just running the opposite way. And yeah. he slams into the Christmas tree, and the thing goes over, <laughs> and about half the glass ornaments hit the ground. And oh, it yeah. Was, it, was just a, it was like a wooden floor. Yeah. Boom. Glass everywhere. Oh, Plate yeah. glass window gone. Christmas tree. Our sweet, beloved dog lasted in our house two days <laughs> before it went to live somewhere else. Before he went. To live somewhere oh, else. Oh man! I, I, I know you guys were heartbroken, man. <laughs> it was it was it was horrible. Yeah. And my mom was just like, "Look, I have four boys and a golden retriever in a house. Yeah. And that <laughs> that dog just took out the back window and the Christmas tree in one fell swoop. Oh yeah. We we can't do this. She was like, I, I she gave him. She was going to a, a church out there, and there was a a young couple that had a farm. So at the time. We were just like, I mean, I was five, I yeah. think, crying, just crying. Oh, yeah. But, you know, I'm sure that couple that got the dog, they, I bet that dog had just a, a blast oh, running yeah. around on a farm. Oh, yeah, the Goldens are just awesome dogs. Oh, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. But, man, just he took out the Christmas tree and the back window. So yeah. that was a that was a <laughs> Christmas event. <laughs> you know, people don't realize how just naturally destructive young boys are. You know, and we were not destructive on purpose. I mean, we never set out to destroy stuff. At least I didn't, you know, but I was always wanting to see how things would work. And it was like, hey, you know, if I connect this battery to this nail, you know, it turns red hot. That's really cool. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, it does. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> My dad, he still goes out there in his garage and finds drill bits that I broke and things I destroyed, melted his drills down. Oh, oh yeah, gosh. Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Finds that hidden cigar box that has all the broken parts in it. Yeah, <laughs> that's good times, man. Good times. <laughs> all right, that's it for today. Once again, we're brought to you by Cornwell Tools. Have a great day, and get out there and work on something. <laughs>